Um, I do have a bulletin update. Lacey Emma will be providing our children's message for us this morning. And for those that are worshiping with us online, we invite you to go ahead and get your communion elements ready as well as your candles for the rest of the service. So let us now worship together the newborn king. Let us be called into worship using the first five verses of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness. And, and the, darkness the darkness did not overtake it. Let us pray. God of mystery and wonder, creator, Christ, and spirit, on this holy night the angels sing your praises with great joy. The shepherds welcome your saving love, born in a manger. Mary and Joseph ponder your promise cradled in their arms. Glory to you, O God, for such gifts entrusted to us in Christ Jesus. And so we come to praise you, singing with the angels, 
amazed like the shepherds, cradling the Christ child in our hearts once again. Glory to you, O God, source of light and love for all people. Amen. You may be seated. On the first Sunday of Advent, we lit a candle for hope. On the second day of Sunday, Advent, we lit a candle for peace. On the third Sunday of Advent, we lit a candle for love. On the fourth Sunday of Advent, we lit a candle for joy. In the first chapter of John, the Gospel writer tells us that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. The candle of Christ, the light of the world, is kindled. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Amen.
this size. Huh. <laughs> All right, Preston, be totally honest. What are you most excited for tomorrow? What about Christmas, though? Um, the, presents. the presents. Yeah. Luella, what are you most excited for? For the presents and Father God. That is an amazing response. Okay, what if I tell you I brought presents today? Okay, so tomorrow morning, when you wake up and you go downstairs and you look under the tree, let's say you find this present, and you find this present. Which one are you going to be more excited to open? Which one are you going to be more excited to open? This one? Why are you excited to open this one? Because it's bigger. Because it's bigger? Mm-hmm. It's your favorite color green. Mm -hmm. Luella, why do you want to open this one? Because it's my favorite red and my favorite green. Your favorite red and your favorite green. It's prettier, right, than this small brown box? Well, and it does shine. It makes all different colors if you hold it up. Even blue, Even blue your favorite. They got you presents? That's amazing. Well, what if I told you that when those shepherds were coming to find Jesus, the greatest present of all, they didn't find him in something that looked this pretty. They found him in something that looked about like this. They found him in a manger, wrapped in a little bit of swaddle, and lying there with Mary and Joseph. Now, would you think that the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords would be found in something like a manger? Would you think that? Probably not, right? Well, that is God's reminder to us that sometimes our greatest gifts don't come in the prettiest of packages, but come where we least expect them and are going to do amazing things for us. Can y'all pray with me? Everyone. <laughs> good morning. Well, good evening, Lord. It's us again. Good evening, Lord. It's us again. Thank you for sending our greatest gift. Thank you for sending our greatest gift. In the form of a babe. Lying in a manger. Lying in a manger. Amen. Amen. Y'all are good to go. God of light and life, open our hearts to hear your promise of new life in the familiar story of Christmas. Surprise us with new insights and refresh us with deep wisdom. Enfold in us the light of your Holy Spirit as we encounter the word made flesh in scripture. Amen. Our scripture for this Christmas Eve service is, of course, the second chapter in the Gospel of Luke, the first 20 verses, and I am using the beloved King James Version for this. Hear now the word of the Lord. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was the first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was while they were there. The days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. 
And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is called Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them in heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A couple of days after Thanksgiving, 
I received a phone call from Linda, who is a member of our evening Bible study class. And she was calling to let me know that she just didn't feel like she could teach her assigned lesson and wanted to know if perhaps we could try to find a substitute teacher for her. She was so apologetic. You have to understand, she's one of these people that if she says she's going to do something, she's going to do it. She said she hated to put this on us and she had committed to this and that she takes things like her word very seriously. But I assured her that we could find a substitute teacher, and we did. But I was feeling kind of bad for her because she was so distressed. So I said, shifting gears, how was your Thanksgiving? She said, you know, Lisa, it was, it was really good. She said, it was just a handful of family. But we all got together, we all got along, and really did have a nice day. She said, here's the thing, though. Right after Thanksgiving, I went to my mother's grave. And this is not something I would normally do, she told me. As a matter of fact, her mother died in 2008. And this is the first time that she has been to the grave since. She told me that she felt compelled to go. She didn't know what she expected to find there or receive there. She just knew that she needed to be there. She then went on to tell me that not long after standing alone at her mother's grave, she felt something deep within her soul. She felt God's powerful and yet gentle presence all around her. She said it delicately settled on her mind, on her shoulders, on her heart. She felt God's peace course throughout her body. You know, that kind of peace that only God can give. The kind that surpasses human understanding. And it was at that grave, she said, that God showed up for her in every way she needed in every way she needed. She then laughed and said, as they do in many black churches, Lisa, he a own time God. Yes, he is. Linda doesn't know what she might need from God today and tomorrow, this Christmas, whether she might find herself back at a grave or maybe kneeling before a manger. But this is what she does know. Whether at the grave or the manger, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, will meet her there. Either way, the sun will be lifted up. Whether from the manger by a mother or from a grave by the power of the Father, the sun will be lifted up. Even in walking in darkness, the light of Christ is still here. It's still among us, the very presence of God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Because he an own time God. Yes, he is. Praise be to God the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, today and every day. Amen. It is that faith that we have in God that brings us here to celebrate and worship Jesus. So let us now stand and affirm our faith as a church using the words printed in your bulletin from a declaration of faith. God sent the promised deliverer to his people. Jesus, the long-expected Savior, came into the world as a child, descended from David, conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of Mary a virgin. He lived as a Jew among Jews. He announced to his people the coming of God's kingdom of justice and peace on earth. We affirm that Jesus was born of woman, as is every child, yet born of God's power, as was no other child. In the person and work of Jesus, God himself and a human life are united but not confused, distinguished but not separated. The coming of Jesus was itself the coming of God's prophecy. Through his birth, life, death, and resurrection, he brings about the relationship between God and humanity that God always intended. Amen. You may be seated. I invite you now to join with me in the great prayer of thanksgiving printed in the bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is right and our greatest duty and joy, gracious God creator of heaven and earth, to praise you with heart, mind, soul, and strength. You created light out of nothing and formed us in your image, calling us to love and serve you and live in peace in the world you love. When we turned from you, you did not turn from us. You offered us a word of liberation through the prophets, guiding us back to follow your way. And so with choirs of angels, with shepherds and saints, prophets and disciples, with your people from every time and place, we join the whole creation to lift our hearts in joyful praise.
give you thanks, holy God, for sending your beloved son, Jesus, into the world. Born in the night, he is the light of the world. Born in the humility of a stable, he is yet filled with majesty. Though poor, he is rich in mercy and grace. Though rejected by the world, he welcomes all to his side. Though dying on the cross, he brings new life. And rising from the grave, he promises to be with us always. And when he was raised to your glory, you sent your Holy Spirit to keep us united with him and one another. Remembering these wondrous things, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Merciful God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gathered at this holy table, and on these gifts of bread and wine. May they be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus. Nourished by them, may we become the body of Christ at work in the world, made new and redeemed by his blood, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory are yours now and forever. As our Lord taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night our Lord and Savior was betrayed, he sat at table with his disciples. And knowing what was ahead for him after dinner, he took the bread and gave thanks for it. And then he broke the bread and said to them, This is my body, which will be broken for you. And in the same manner also our Lord took a cup. And he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, for the remission of your sin. Drink, all of you, of it. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death until he comes. bread of life. Sweet Lord, oh Jesus, Lord, they made you be born in a
time ago.
eternal and ever-present God, in gratitude for this meal in which you have given yourself to us, we give ourselves to you. Take us out this night to walk in your light, to follow the Prince of Peace, to lead lives filled with your love, feeding a hungry world, and sharing your good news with those we meet. In the name of Jesus Christ, born in wonder for the sake of the world you love. Amen.
us is born this night a Savior who is Christ the Lord. So may the love of the Christ child embrace you and the joy of the Christ child fill your heart. May the peace of the Christ child give you rest and the hope of the Christ child guide you into the year ahead. Merry Christmas. Amen. Thank you.